Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about some new discoveries in regards to the history of our own planet and how the actual spin of the planet changed in the last um, 80 million years or so. More specifically, I wanted to discuss this new discovery coming from one of the recent papers that suggests that the rotation of the planet, the axis of rotation of the planet, shifted by about 12 degrees before returning back to its original position and all of this was happening around the time when dinosaurs like T-Rex were considered to be the kings of the planet. They were the apex predators, so roughly around 80 million years ago. Which means that pretty much everything on the surface shifted by about 12 degrees. Which makes this quite an interesting and quite an unusual discovery. But first of all, let's actually discuss some of the differences between various types of changes that our planet goes through once in a while. Mostly because it's relatively easy to make a mistake when it comes to these various concepts in regards to planet Earth and the way it spins. Today we're talking about the concept known as the polar drift. This is when the actual axis of rotation of the planet moves from where it is today, the North Pole, to a completely different location, making the North Pole somewhere entirely different. Which also of course leads to various climatic changes on the surface of the planet. Now that's obviously something we don't really know much about just yet, but we know that the climate does change quite dramatically depending on where the axis of rotation of the planet is. And that's mostly due to the types of surfaces that start to receive solar radiation. But even when it comes to the rotation changes or the actual spin changes of the planet, there are still other concepts that we're not actually discussing today. I think this image right here sort of illustrates this really well. So there's also something known as precession and this is something our planet goes through roughly every 100,000 years or so or sometimes a little bit less than that. And precession is generally caused by the gravitational effects from the sun and from the moon. But then there's another concept known as mutation where the planet starts wobbling a little bit more and this is also usually due to various gravitational effects from various bodies around planet earth or actually any other planet as well. With the main difference being that in true polar wonder it's the actual axis that changes on the surface of the planet, whereas with the precession and with the mutation, the location of the axis does not change on the surface of the planet, but the actual planet's rotation and the actual planet's spin starts to move around and starts to affect the planet that way. And even though in precession, for example, the effects are coming from objects outside of planet Earth, for true polar wonder, the actual effects are coming from within the planet, or at least from the surface. In this case, it usually has something to do with the internal distribution of weight inside the planet. By changing how the mass is distributed on the inside or by essentially reshuffling some of the things on the surface, the axis of the planet starts to shift because the weight is now in different locations. Or in more scientific terms, it basically affects the moment of inertia of the planet itself. And this is generally a really really slow process, with the usual speed of the polar drift being about 1 degree per at least a million years, usually longer. But there is actually a slight mystery in regards to this. Even though the idea of polar drift has existed for a long time and many polar drifts have happened on the planet throughout the ages, it seems that usually the actual axis returns to the original location after a few million years. And so basically here, the axis sort of always returns to a relatively similar spot. And it's not entirely clear why exactly that happens. It's as if something returned the distribution of weight inside the planet back to its original value. With the major explanation essentially suggesting that as the polar drift occurs, some kind of a potential energy is stored inside the continents themselves. But then after a few million years, once the continents become loaded with this potential energy, sort of like a spring or a trampoline, they sort of bounce back and return the axis to its original location on the planet. At least that's the only explanation that we have right now in regards to how all of this works. And so let's get back to the original discovery and the original paper that I'm discussing. So first of all, how exactly do the scientists even know any of this happens? Well, a lot of the studies of polar drift usually rely on something known as paleomagnetism. And this technique uses the idea of continental drift. And in simple terms, this is sort of how it works. As two continental plates move away from one another, they essentially create a magnetic polarity record of the entire planet. As the magnetic polarity of the planet reverses from north to south, a lot of the metallic deposits and sediments in these two plates that are moving apart are going to provide the record of where the polarity was and when exactly it changed. 
And so by studying this for many decades now, the scientists were able to figure out the location of various tectonic plates and also the behavior of the magnetic poles of planet Earth. And because of this, the scientists are pretty sure that in the last 200 million years, the actual axis of rotation shifted back and forth by roughly around 30 degrees or so. But now the scientists are also convinced that there was a very major shift and very unusual shift between about 79 to 86 million years ago when the entire planet tilted by approximately 12 degrees and then returned back to its original location. Which is something that doesn't actually happen that often and doesn't happen that quick usually. This means that the actual axis was moving by about 3 degrees every million years, approximately 3 times faster than all of the other times in history. And so naturally, the question here is what exactly caused this to happen? With one of the possible explanations relating to the idea of continents and continental shelves. And it relates to the Pacific plate that you see right here, the largest tectonic plate on our planet. The scientists suspect that it might have actually been sinking under a different plate 84 million years ago, but then shifted to the west and started moving into the other location, now sinking under a different plate in the west. And so that's of course one of the potential explanations. But the other explanation, which I personally find really intriguing, is in regards to what happens inside the planet. There's also a chance that all of this was caused by what's known as the mantle plumes. The shift and the motion of various hot masses inside the planet itself that might have moved somewhere. Possibly causing something else to change inside the planet as well and possibly first causing these changes in the axes but then also causing some other effects on the surface of the planet as well. One of the potential effects here is in regards to what's known as the Deccan Traps. This was a series of really, really powerful volcanoes that lasted for thousands and thousands of years, approximately 10 million years after this. And there's still no actual explanation for what caused the Deccan Traps or why the volcanic eruption started to begin with. What is pretty clear though is that this event may have played a major role in one of the biggest extinction events on the planet. The event that caused the demise of most of the dinosaurs on the planet. But that's of course something that we can just speculate about because there's really no evidence for any of this. It's just the timeline is really interesting. Nevertheless, what is pretty certain is that the planet definitely changed the location of its axis for roughly around a few million years before it returned back to its original position. And this by itself doesn't really have a good explanation and is actually quite mysterious because it happened so quick, much quicker than any time previously. And because we know these events also very likely happened on objects like Mars, objects like Enceladus, objects like Europa, it's also important to learn about these particular true polar wonders simply to understand how it changes the planet, or in some cases the moon, when the axis of the rotation changes dramatically. At the moment, it's still not a question we can answer very easily. We don't really know. Which makes this a pretty interesting and a pretty unusual discovery. A discovery that we might come back and talk about in the future simply because we don't really have enough evidence or explanations about what exactly caused all of this. Well, anyway, for now that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.